Hello, Twins fans. Welcome back to another episode of From Lee Limestone. I am Matt Lenz with Twins Daily, and today I want to give credit where credit is due. Uh, especially with how disappointing the 2023 season has been to this point. We're a little frustrated with the front office and how they haven't been able to fix the bullpen and they... <clears throat> Hello, Twins fans. Welcome back to another episode of From Lee Limestone. I'm Matt Lenz with Twins Daily, and today I want to give the Twins front office credit where credit is due. Now, for everything that... Twins fans see at the major league level and have been very frustrated with, mainly the bullpen and and the kind of the the all or nothing approach that the offense has. They've been very good at identifying and developing major league talent. But let's define that first. You have to understand that there are thousands of minor league baseball players, yet there are only about 850 major league baseball players at any given time. And so it is very, very difficult to identify and develop somebody in, in just to a major league contributor. I'm not even saying all-star superstar or maybe even an everyday player, just somebody who can contribute at the major league level. Think of like a Nick Gordon type. It's very difficult just to get to that level. Now, when we look closer at the draft, and based on the most recent set of data that I could find, 73% of first-round picks reach the major league level. So, that I mean, obviously, as a first-round pick, that's, that's more or less the expectation. But that number drops pretty quickly as you go down the draft. Second round, 51%. Third round drops to 40%, and of course, it just keeps going down and down and down from there. Again, that's all just to say that as a front office, if you develop somebody into a major league player, that is success because it is so difficult. And so I want to give this front office credit in that area. They've been very good. Now, how do they rank against other organizations? I can't tell you. I didn't dive into other organizations. But just from what the statistics suggest... I think that they've been really good. Now, some of the players that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review here who have contributed over the last two to three seasons um, have, have not, were not acquired by this front office, but they've been around long enough. Felvin took over in 2016. That was, it was six, seven years ago. So they've been around long enough where, you know, a guy like Nick Gordon, they could have dealt him if they didn't believe in, in his talent. And so I am including guys on this list who they didn't necessarily acquire, but have been in the organization long enough that, I kind of consider them as, as as part of the Falveen, you know, regime, so to speak. And so let's start with Nick Gordon, uh, a first round pick. It maybe hasn't reached the, that all-star or even everyday player level, but he's been a reliable super utility for the Twins for a couple of years now. Of course, he's struggled a little bit in 2023 and is dealing with a fractured shin now, um, but ultimately just has been a really good contributor for the Twins uh, over the last couple of seasons. Some other names that obviously have been contributors, Trevor Larnick, if he can learn how to hit off speed, he's going to be an everyday player, possibly an all-star hitter for the Twins. Alex Kirilov, hopefully his wrist issues are behind him and he can continue to hit the ball well. He, he might end up being a poor first baseman or more of a, a, a DH type, but again, he is he has shown that he can be a very good hitter. Uh, Royce Lewis has, when healthy, has shown that he could be great. He could be somebody that might be the face of the franchise and could be that superstar in years to come. Uh, we have Griffin Jacks, who, again, has just been a very good contributor for the Twins as a reliever over the last couple of years. Jose Miranda struggled in 2023, but he was a competitive balance pick uh, back in 2016. And he's developed into somebody who hopefully can regain his, his form from 2022 and, and be an everyday player, possible all-star for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, Joe Ryan and Joan Duran, both guys who, who were acquired by the Twins. Joe Ryan you know, he was mostly already developed, but again, there's part of part of what they did is they identified talent, and now Joe Ryan is going to be a mainstay in the tw at the top of the Twins rotation, whether it's number one or number two. Uh, but he's going to be a mainstay for the Minnesota Twins for years to come. Some other names: Luis Arise, of course. We've turned him into Pablo Lopez, Mitch Garver, Bailey Ober. I mean, these are just some of the names that have been been good contributors for the Minnesota Twins. Some other guys who have contributed, maybe not always good, 
uh, Gilber Gilberto Celestino, Giovanni Moran, Jorge Alcala, Louis Varland. Um, I mean, he's been he's been pretty good in, in what we've seen from him so far. So to be continued on that. Brent Hedrick, again, pretty effective in, in the very small sample that we've seen of him amongst other names. And then we've got guys like Julianne, who, who is very close to becoming that regular contributor. Matt Wallner, who is very close. Brooks Lee, Simeon Woods Richardson, again, amongst other names. So this is all just to say that the that the front office for where they maybe have lacked in other spots, they have been very good at identifying uh, and developing major league talent for this club. And so it'll be interesting to see over the next couple of years as we see more of this youth movement. You know, Joey Galley is only here for a year, so maybe we see more of Matt Wallner next year. Uh, Polanco and, and, and Kepler are both guys uh, who are part of the last youth movement who are close to becoming free agents. And so again, we see maybe where Julianne fits in with this team. But but just a lot of a lot of things that have gone well for the Twins when it comes to drafting, international free agency, and, and even trading for some of these younger prospects. So I'm excited to see where the organization comes. I know they've also missed on some trades. It, it, trying to kind of focus on the positives here. But overall, when it comes to just kind of identifying and developing young talent, where do you think the Twins kind of rank in this? Let me know in the comments. Let me know on Twitter at Lindsay2108 or let me know on YouTube, Musings from Twins Territory.